Hi everyone and welcome to the final session of our Youth Wellbeing Week. Uh, today's session is about dreaming big and your aspirations for the future and will be hosted by Paralympic swimming champion Liz Johnson. So Liz, I will pass over to you. Thanks Pippa. Hi everybody. Um, yeah, I'm going to share my screen now so hopefully you'll be able to see my PowerPoint and I will appear in the corner of your screen. As you can see, the date was scheduled for this one for the 14th of December, but we had a few issues. So you get me at the end instead, but it's been such a busy week as we hurtle towards Christmas. that I haven't had time to change the date on the, on the front slide. So never mind. welcome everybody. And hopefully by now you've watched the other bite-sized sessions and you've can put all this together now for me to talk about dreaming big, finding our motivations and helping you in the future achieve those goals. So before we get started, because I know we spend a lot of time at the moment in front of our screens, I'm just going to do a quick little activity with us all. So if you are fully mobile, feel free to stand up. I, over the years, have really struggled as a swimmer to get to do any land exercises on, on sessions like this, but finally I figured it out. So if you, like I said, if you are able, stand up and stretch up. And what I want you to do is a bit of breaststroke. So you're going to be in this position and you're going to pull down and then you're going to come in and then you're going to bend your legs, disappear out the screen probably, and then shoot back up. Now, if you have issues with your arms, you can do that so that you only use your legs and you just do the squat in motion. And if you use, can only use your arms and not, if not use your legs to function properly, then of course you can just do this motion. So it's something that we can all do together. So let's just quickly do 10 of those so that we are a bit more awake so we can listen to the rest of the session. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as I said, you can use that anytime you want when you just need a bit of an exercise because we're all spending a lot, a lot of time in front of our screens at the moment. And it's nice to get our brains thinking, to get the oxygen pumping, the adrenaline going, circulation, body moving, brain thinking, ready for a lot of these sessions that we sit in front of at the moment. And as a swimmer, as an athlete, I love a bit of exercise. So like I said, welcome. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed all of the other sessions this week. I'm going to talk about dreaming big because one thing I've learned over the years is if we don't have a dream, we can't have a plan. So this is me. We all start out the same. We all start out. Some people have more opportunities than others. Some people are fortunate enough to have more privilege than others. But ultimately, we're all beginning in the same place as young people. Babies and anything is possible. And it's our aspirations are the only, the only person that can really change those aspirations and affect those aspirations is us. We can have dreams that other people give to us, but unless they're important to us and they mean something to us, then ultimately when the going gets tough, so I'm sure you've learned through the other sessions this week, then think we need to be able to focus and we need to be able to be motivated. So it's important to have one big dream that matters to you. And if anybody puts limits on those or tells you that they're silly or that they're not possible, then you find other people to support you. And we'll move on to that later in the session about finding the right people to support you at the right time, at various points in your life to be able to help you to achieve your goals. So the reason I put this slide up is that little person with those blonde bunches, believe it or not, it was me. And my dream as a young person was to become a Paralympic swimming champion. And as Pippa said in the introduction you heard, I did manage to achieve that, but it didn't happen overnight and it wasn't easy and I didn't have it all my own way. But one thing I will tell you is it was completely worth it. But the, I, the, the reason I show you this photo of me as a three-year-old, my first ever nursery photo is because in it, I ask you to look at it and see, what do you see? Other than of course, a little toddler who hasn't learned to smile or is camera, camera shy, the flash has gone off and 
blinded me. But ultimately, when you look at that picture, I am no different to any other three-year-old child. But I am. I went to the Paralympic Games, which means that in order to qualify for the Paralympic Games, I must have a disability of some kind. And I was born with a disability called cerebral palsy. And cerebral palsy is the doctor's fancy way of saying brain damage. Now that can sound quite severe and there is a, there's a spectrum and a continuum and some people have very, very severe impairments and some very, very mild. And I sit somewhere in the middle. But if I hadn't have had dreams and I hadn't had people supporting me to achieve those dreams, I might never have been able to go to the Paralympic Games. I wouldn't be the athlete mentor that I am now. I wouldn't be the person that I am now. And I wouldn't be talking to you today. But if I'd relied on other people to come up with my dreams, I definitely would have ended up going down different avenues and maybe not even being a swimmer. Because when I was three in that picture, not many people knew what the Paralympic Games were. They weren't on the TV. And most people with disabilities, they didn't even do sport. I, I know that when I learned to swim, people were just really, really grateful that I wasn't swimming around in circles and I wasn't drowning. And so the whole reason that I show you this slide is because actually what I want you to know is even if you think your dream is so big that it's going to take you decades to get there or you're, you've come up with this idea and this dream that you want to achieve, and people are like, well, that's not going to be possible or nobody's ever done that before. That's OK. That's not a reason to, to, to flatten the dream or to find something else. This is about finding what motivates you to get out of bed in the morning and make things happen. You, you have to know what you want. And not everybody always knows what they want. Sometimes these things take time. I didn't decide I wanted to be a Paralympian until I was 10 years old. Some people don't discover their dream job until they're 50 years old or 60 years old. That's OK. But it's really important to have dreams and have aspirations so that you can focus your attentions and you can be happy because we're all a lot happier if we're doing something that we enjoy. But we also know that we can't always be doing everything that we enjoy. And I know that this week you've covered off goal setting with Dave, confidence with Jack, stress tolerance with Adam and well-being with Claire. And all of these things are really, really important to enable us to achieve our dreams because it best prepares us to deal with anything that's coming our way. And the other thing that's important is our dreams can change and that's okay. And it's important to remember that. So like I said, I was a little person just like everybody else. And I had dreams and, and they changed. But in that first picture, there I am with my mum a baby and at that point I wasn't making decisions for myself I wasn't even choosing what to eat and we start off and we have hopefully a really special adult in our lives helping make those decisions for us starting to direct our dreams starting to give us opportunities to try new things and when we're born people have dreams for us whether that is they want us to be happy or they want us to go to school or they want us to get educated or they want us to play sport or play music all these different things. But if you speak to most adults, they're dreams for us that we live healthy and happy lives. And as we get older and we're invited to try these more opportunities, then what happens is we develop our own dreams and aspirations, as I've been talking about. And like I said, one of my biggest dreams was to become a Paralympian. First a Paralympian and then a Paralympic champion. That was the ultimate for me. But it's also important to know that when we're having these dreams and we're creating them, that we need, as I'm sure you talked about in the goal setting, to set ourselves little steps along the way. Because often our dreams are not completely down, the success of our dreams, not completely down to us. For example, I could go to the Paralympics and I could swim in the Paralympic final. And I was really fortunate. I swam in three Paralympic games, but each one of those if somebody had beaten me every single time, then I would never have been able to call myself a Paralympic champion. But I still might have swum faster than I'd ever swum before. And I might have broken the world record, but someone else might have just gone faster than me on that day. And so when we're building our dreams, it's important to have them 
to aim for them, but to rationalize them and know that, like I said, they can change at any time, but also they don't define us. But by having big, massive dreams, what will happen is it will create opportunity and it will create drive. And by that, what I mean is sometimes looking at this slide, you set out to do something. I set out to be a Paralympic swimmer. I set out to become a gold medalist. And past that, other than going to school and getting my my GCSEs and my A-levels, and I was someone who wanted to go to university because it was going to help with my swimming and it was going to buy me some more time to be a student athlete. It's not for everybody, but it was for me. But past becoming a Paralympic champion, I didn't really think of my, my dreams past that. I didn't think of where I might end up, the goals I had or the opportunities, because everything I did was focused on making me the best swimmer that I could be. But in becoming the best swimmer that I could be and going on that Paralympic adventure and trying these things and meeting new people and traveling to new places, I discovered other goals and dreams and opportunities that I could have. And the biggest thing about having a dream and making it a big dream that matters to you so much that you're willing to break through barriers, overcome obstacles and, and fight for what you really believe in and really want. The biggest thing about having that dream is it's the motivation that you need. Because if something doesn't matter to you very much or you're not that bothered about it, if something comes up that prevents you or, or things become a bit difficult, then the chances are that you're not going to fight for it. So if, if, if you think about the things that you enjoy and the things that matter to you and think of the emotions that, that, uh, uh, that you feel inside of you when you think that that's going to be taken off you or, or you're not going to be able to do, do that or you're going to miss an opportunity, that's, that's why we have dreams. That's the feeling we want from our dreams because we want to know that when the going gets tough, we've got what it takes to succeed. And so in being a Paralympic swimmer and being a Paralympic champion, and like I said, traveling the world and meeting new people, it opened other doors to me. And in the picture there with my pink top on, a very bright pink top in the middle, I'm sat with one of the best broadcasters in the world, Claire Balding, and a friend of mine that I used to swim with, Mark Woods, and we are at the swimming pool in the, at the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games in the Channel 4 television studio, presenting live on national television. And when I was, like I said, when I was that toddler in that picture, and I, even when I was a 10 year old, the Paralympic Games, they were not on the TV. So if, I, if someone had asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up, and I said, oh, I wanna, I wanna be a broadcaster, I wanna work in sport, and I wanna be on the TV, people would have gone, well, that's not gonna happen because they don't even put Paralympic sport on TV. And so that's the other thing is it's 20 years that it took, but it still happened. And so, like I said to you, even if your goal seems like it's decades away, don't give up on it and don't let people talk you out of it if that's what you wanna do, because it gives you direction and it opens other opportunities and doors that you never knew, never even considered. And as with the picture there, of me on Celebrity MasterChef. Now, I am not the best cook in the world, therefore I would never have applied to go on MasterChef for real because they wouldn't have accepted me. But going on Celebrity MasterChef was a huge experience for me. I absolutely loved me. It was exhausting and it was stressful, but it was brilliant. And, but again, I was found myself in this situation where Paralympic, Paralympians, people with disabilities, they would never have been allowed on a cooking show when I was little because people didn't understand. People didn't know what we were capable of. People don't know what anyone is capable of until they have the opportunity to show it. So that's why we want to have our dreams, but we want them to be our own dreams because they, they create us as people and they give us a chance and they motivate us and they build resilience in us and they help us build our confidence and they help us create change, which is that final picture there where you can see it says one goal, parity of opportunity. And that is what I do now. Now I'm really, really passionate about encouraging all walks of life, all workplaces, all societies, all sports to incorporate everybody, to enable them and allow them to dream big. Because I know I was one of the really fortunate people 
who had the chance to follow my heart, follow my dreams, and the opportunity to, to find an arena to enable them to come true. And I think everybody deserves that. So we all have the capability to create change. And whether that's create change for ourselves, our friends or families, or a wider global picture where we create change about the way people think. But dreaming should never stop. We can always change our dreams, we can update them, we can redirect them. But what we always should know is we are capable and we want to be able to succeed. And people around us want us to be able to succeed too. And that leads me to making sure that we surround ourselves with the right team. Different people at different points in our life have different relevance. And we need to find the right people that believe in us. So if we find our dreams, we need to get that support team. And so here I've got various pictures. So when I was swimming, I needed a doctor because I didn't know enough about staying well and staying fit and staying healthy. And I needed a physio to make sure that my body got repaired and I was in the best shape that I could be to train as hard as possible to try and reach those dreams. And I needed a coach because again, I was the swimmer. And whilst we had a partnership where we talked to each other and we discussed things, I'm someone who needs somebody to observe me and then correct me and tell me what I need to do differently. And you can't do that by yourself when you're, like, when you're in the water with your, your eyes pointing at the black line on the bottom of the swimming pool. Then there was the girls on my swim team. That's why I'm a guys too, and I've got a lot of friends who are guys, but these girls on my swim team, they got me through some of the best times of my life and some of the worst. And I think the important thing about that picture where we all got our swimming hats in Beijing was if I'd been in school with these people, we probably wouldn't have been friends because we're not that similar. But what connected us was we all had an understanding about how important it was to have a dream and how much those dreams mattered to us. And we could all support each other and give each other advice and empathize with each other when things weren't going very well, build people up when they needed it, celebrate with them then when they were successful. But that diversity of us made us stronger because if you put people in your team that are all like you, then you're always gonna see the same problems you're always going to come up with the same solutions. And if they're not successful, then you get stuck. So you want to have a range of people around you that can help you with many different perspectives to make you the strongest version of yourself that you can be. And then, of course, you need people in your life that are going to make things fun. You can see there my friend with her panda hat on. So I was just about to fall off the railings into that river. But you need that. You need balance. And so always be aware of the impact and the influence that people are having on you at any one time and be, be honest with yourself know why they're in your life and like it's a two-way street so it's not I'm not saying get people in your team just for their their skill set or their personality or what they can do for you but how they make you feel and how you how you how you make them feel when they're with you because they're then becoming invested in your dream too and they will help you and they will make the journey better for you because it's a lot more rewarding when you succeed if you've got people to share it with. So one activity that you can do is the shield activity that I've got on my screen now. And I've said keep dreaming because I've mentioned it several times already in the last 20 minutes. Keep dreaming, keep updating your dreams, make sure they're still relevant to you because it's true what I said, if they don't matter to you, then it's really difficult to be confident in them. And it's really difficult to be resilient. And it's really bit difficult to stay motivated. So if you do this activity every now and again, you can just check that you're on track or that you're still doing what you want to be doing. And you're still aware of where you're dreaming and what you're trying to achieve. So the shield here, this is a blank one. So you can take a photo of this screen and then you can use it. So this is my shield, as you can see, and the past changes because you can keep adding stuff to it as you get older, there's more in your past, or you can change it based on what's relevant. But for me, part I'm looking at the other screen here so I can see the shield properly, but I used to be a swimmer. I used to be an athlete who won medals. I used to spend a lot of time traveling, whether that be in the car, to and from training. I used to travel 
four hours a day to go training five days a week so that's a lot and I also used to spend a lot of time on aeroplanes traveling to training camps competitions even as an athlete as, a, as an athlete once I'd retired I was traveling to events I was working spending a lot of time on planes and then I've got the the, the book because a lot of my life was taken up by education until I graduated from university but now I'm in a very different place and actually whilst the pandemic has been difficult for a lot of people I have found it actually really nice because I finally got to spend more time at home I discovered my bike I recently got married I've become a bit of a gardener because we weren't allowed out and didn't have anything else to do I spend a lot more time in front of my computer screen so then that helped me reassess my goals and work out what I wanted moving forward what my dreams are now and my dreams now are that I want to be happy I want to do something that gives me a good feeling where I can help other people that's why I've got little people my drawings aren't great I can see as you can see I realized I missed the water because we weren't able to go swimming during lockdown so I missed the water but and I want to get back to that on a on a on a, on a social level on a keeping fit level not on a competing as an athlete level but still I want water to feature in my life I want to swim my bike which was one of my discoveries I want to keep cycling because I've realized it gives me freedom to check out the local area that I live because I'm not very good at walking and I definitely can't run but by cycling kept me fit I realized it's quite sociable and I love it and I've realized also that I enjoy spending time at home so I'm going to try and do more of that but I do miss going out to events and broadcasting and working with young people on site so I want to get back to that filming and being out and about and meeting real people and then that final bit of my your shield around your skills and your priorities because sometimes they are what help us shape our dreams and I've realized that at the moment some of my biggest skills are that I'm passionate and I'm motivated and I can be really resilient because over the years a lot of, lot more things went wrong than went right when I was swimming but I realized through perseverance and being able to bounce back which is what resilience is and keeping going and not giving up when things don't go your way then eventually you can achieve those dreams and going back to what I said about the opportunities that open up actually you find yourself doing amazing things that you never even considered so my priorities to go with those skills that I want to be happy I want to be smiley I want to enjoy what I do and also I'm going to make sure that I continue to be adaptable because if we're not adaptable then we like that will affect my happiness and also affect my dreams because you can have a plan and you can set your goals as uh, you heard earlier this week but it, they change there's so much that is out of your control and actually it's never what happens to us that defines us people don't remember us for what happened to us but they, they it's how we respond that defines what we're going to be going forward and we've all got it in us We've all got that strength. If we surround ourselves by the right, with the right team and we make sure our, get our dreams are relevant and motivated and we're motivated, then anything is possible. It might take time. It might not be easy. It probably won't be easy, but I can promise you it'll always be worth it. And that's why at the bottom there in that banner, I always like to write a little quote. And at the moment I've realized my quote for now is that every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. And by that, I mean, I'm taking us right back to the very first slide where I was talking about how our dreams have to matter to us. And the only the, the person who's in charge of them is us. We can do things for other people, but we'll never feel fully fulfilled, I guess. So it's important that we are the ones that choose our destiny and we're the ones that commit to trying to make that happen because we can be given all the tools and we can be given all the opportunities and the equipment but if we're not all in or we we don't choose to commit then the chances are that it might not happen so i want you to know like i've been saying all along the whole point of dreaming big is to create opportunities to take us on an adventure of a lifetime and maybe we'll get exactly what we set out for, but maybe we'll get so much more. And this picture here is me getting exactly that. As a Paralympian and a swimmer, all I thought I wanted to do was win gold medals. And when I won in Beijing in 2008, 
It was the most amazing feeling. And I'm so grateful I had the opportunity and it was a huge relief. But what I realized was actually, if I hadn't won that gold medal, I would still be me. I would still be Liz Johnson. I would still have achieved a lot. And I would still have developed as a person and got so much out of the opportunities that having that dream had. And this picture here is me doing exactly that. I was in London, 2012. So really fortunate to get to a, go to a home Paralympic Games. But more than that, I got chosen to read the oath at the opening ceremony on behalf of all the athletes, 4,300 athletes competing. And they chose me to read the athlete oath in front of 80,000 people in the stadium and millions watching on the TV. And I, I, the reason I show you this is because when I was young, I would not have stood up. I didn't even stand up in class. I didn't even put my hand up in class to answer a question. I used to write it down on a piece of paper and then show people once the answer had been announced that I knew the answer. I wasn't confident enough. But by having dreams and having opportunities and building my confidence to becoming successful and achieving little goals along the way, it made me realize I could transfer that confidence and I could challenge myself and I could do things that previously I didn't know I was capable of. So this idea of nothing is impossible, the word itself says I'm possible. It's a bit cheesy, but it's true. And actually it all goes back to making sure that your dream is big, your dream is bold, and your dream matters to you so that you are motivated and you are confident and you are hungry for that level of success and success looks different to all people so what I want you to remember is pick a dream that matters to you believe in yourself and then find the right people around you to support you and so my my dream started off as a gold medal here it is but it's not reflecting that well on the computer screen but there's my gold medal from 2008 but actually I'm so much more than that, and I'm only more than that because of the direction that my dream gave me. So good luck, everybody, and believe in yourselves. Has anybody got any questions? Thank you so much, Liz. And um, we've just had two questions sent in, um, both of which you've you've touched on, um, but we'll go through them anyway. So the first one was, um, was it scary having such big dreams in the past as an athlete? And obviously as a child I think it can be scary I think often it's people's responses to your dreams that are scary but the reason that you do your goal setting and you break the dream down into smaller steps is so that you can manage it along the way and you don't then focus on the big dream you just focus on the next next little step on the adventure and it all makes it a bit more manageable Great, thank you. And the other one we've had is, um, obviously as an athlete, you achieved your dreams. Um, do you have new dreams and ambitions now? Do you think it's important to, to keep thinking of new dreams and keep keep going with them? I think you're right, Pippa. I think I must have said this. Yes. So, I'm not going to repeat myself, but it's because it's so important to me. And I want you, you all to know it's important too, that your dreams, you're constantly hitting the refresh button. You're constantly checking that they matter to you. And that's why that shield activity is really useful, because it just gives you the chance not to get caught up on an old dream if, if, it's not, if it doesn't matter to you. And if you just check with yourself if you're still on track and you're still enjoying what you're doing and it still matters to you, then you carry on. But like, it's really important to always have a reason to get up in the morning, however small, because we, we have to do things that we don't like a lot of the time, but we should always get something out of it for us. And so, yeah, I guess I, my dream when I was young was to be an athlete. And, but what I realized was what I loved about being an athlete was every, no day ever felt like I was going to work. And so now I have, I guess, different dreams, but just as exciting is that I really, really want a world where everybody gets the opportunity to be the best version of themselves, not because of their age, not because of where they come from, not because of their education or their family or how much money they've got or what ability they are or any other distinguishing characteristic. I want to create a world where everybody is treated with equity which is kind of like treating people equally but not treating everybody the same but giving everybody what they need to be successful so I guess maybe my dream now is bigger than it was trying to win a gold medal but it's just as exciting 
Thanks, Liz. I think that's a great dream to have. Absolutely, really important. And um, thank you so much for today's session. Hopefully today has inspired everyone to dream big and the other sessions this week have provided you with the support to do so. Um, thank you all for tuning in to our Youth Wellbeing Week. And from everyone at the Dame Kelly Homes Trust, we wish you all a very happy Christmas. Thanks, Liz.